grace, mercy and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. My soul glorifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Saviour. For he has lifted up the humble, and he has filled the hungry with good things. And he remembers his promises to his people for ever. My soul glorifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Saviour. Let's say sorry to God for the ways that we have offended him and when we have forgotten him and forgotten to do what he'd like us to do. Because God is full of mercy, let us say sorry for the things we've done wrong and come to him with all that we have. Lord Jesus Christ, shine your light in the darkness in our hearts. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, open our eyes to your wonderful love. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, unstop our ears to hear your living word. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. God's words of forgiveness to us. May the God of all healing and forgiveness draw us to himself, 
that we may behold the glory of his Son, the Word made flesh, and be cleansed from all our sins, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We respond to grace and forgiveness as we sing the Gloria. Glory, glory, glory to the Lord, glory to the Lord God Almighty. Glory, glory, glory to the Lord, glory to the Lord God God of heaven, you send the gospel to the ends of the earth and your messengers to every nation. Send your Holy Spirit to transform us by the good news of everlasting life in Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. They went to Capernaum and when the Sabbath came, he entered the synagogue and taught. They were astounded at his teaching, for he taught them as one having authority and not as the scribes. Just then, there was in their synagogue a man with an unclean spirit, and he cried out, What have you to do with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. But Jesus rebuked him, saying, be silent and come out of him. And the unclean spirit, throwing him into convulsions and crying with a loud voice, came out of him. They were all amazed and they kept on asking one another, What is this? A new teaching? With authority? He commands even the unclean spirits and they obey him. At once his fame began to spread throughout the surrounding region of Galilee.
Alleluia, Alleluia. We have seen his star at its rising and have come to pay him homage. Alleluia. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke, chapter 2, verses 22 to 40. When the time came for the purification according to the law of Moses, they brought him up to Jerusalem to present to the Lord, as is written in the law of the Lord, every firstborn male shall be designated as holy to the Lord. And they offered a sacrifice according to what is stated in the law of the Lord, a pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons. Now there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. This man was righteous and devout, looking forward to the consolation of Israel. And the Holy Spirit rested on him. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not see death before he had seen the Lord Messiah. Guided by the Spirit, Simeon came into the temple and when the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him what was customary under the law, Simeon took, his, took him into his arms and praised God, saying, Master, now you are dismissing your servant in peace according to your word, for my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the presence of all peoples, a light for revelations to the Gentiles and for glory to your people, Israel. And the child's father and mother were amazed at what was being said about him. Then Simeon blessed them and said to his mother, Mary, this child is destined for the falling and the rising of many in Israel and to be a sign that will be opposed so to that the inner thoughts of many will be revealed and a sword will pierce your own soul too there was also a prophet Anna the daughter of Phanuel of the tribe of Ashes she was of a great age having lived with her husband for seven years after her marriage. Then, as a widow to the age of 84, she had never left the temple, but worshipped there with fasting and prayer day and night. At the moment she came and began to praise God and speak to them about the child to all who were looking for the redemption of Jerusalem. When they had finished everything required by law, by the law of the Lord, they returned to Galilee, to their own town of Nazareth. The child grew up and became strong, filled with wisdom, and the favour of God was upon him. Things are hard at the moment. Have you noticed? Simon and his family have the deeply unwelcome visitor COVID in their household. We are struggling with one of our daughter's severe health issues and endless hospital appointments in various departments. All of us are enduring this most difficult of lockdowns in the cold and dark of January. We have passed the grim milestone of 100,000 deaths from this virus. Things are hard at the moment. And in all of this, hanging on to faith can be hard. So what does our celebration of the presentation of Christ speak into all of this today? I wonder if we are ever tempted to think, of course, it was easy for the people in the Bible. They had their sure and certain faith. They had so much to affirm their faith. They were surrounded by people who all believed exactly the same thing. It's so much harder for us. Well, 
I think when we look at Simeon and Anna, these two elderly heroes of mine, we will see that things were hard for them too. They too experienced uncertainty and struggle. And in all that, hanging on to their faith must have been really hard. We don't know much about Simeon, except to say that he spent all his time in the temple, searching out the consolation of Israel. Exactly how long he had been searching, or what that searching looked like, is not clear. What we do know is that as soon as he saw this tiny baby, he was quite sure his life's work was done, even that he was now ready to die. I don't think we can begin to imagine that this had been an easy existence for him. I think it is more likely that he had to strive and seek, that he had to cling on to scraps of faith on the days when he wondered what on earth he was doing. In other words, I think he was a lot like us. We have a little more information about Anna. We know about her family and that she was only married for seven years before her husband died. In that time, that could well mean she was widowed by the time she was 20. There is no mention of children, so it's very possible she found herself living in the temple in the same way as someone in Victorian times might have found themselves destitute with only the workhouse as an option. We hear that she fasted and prayed night and day. So if she had married at the usual kind of age for that time, we can assume that by the time she saw Jesus, she had been fasting and praying for around 60 years. Do we imagine that she was affirmed and certain throughout those long decades? Or is it more realistic to think that there were days when she thought she had missed the Messiah? or doubted she would ever see the Messiah, or even wondered if there was such a one. And when Anna and Simeon did see Jesus, when to them the hopes and prayers of all those years, the answer to all that diligent seeking and waiting arrived, I don't think we can begin to imagine that those around them immediately said, you know, I think you're right. I completely agree that this tiny, inconsequential baby is just what the people of God have been waiting for all these thousands of years. Far more likely, they were met with cynicism and doubt, even ridicule and derision. So as I look again at Anna and Simeon going through years when they didn't find what they were seeking, times when they prayed without hearing answers, seasons of hope and seasons of doubt, who endured long years, even decades of uncertain waiting, confined to the temple, who when they did see their prayers answered and their hopes fulfilled, were most likely faced with cynicism and ridicule, I think they have plenty to speak into our situation today. As we face the changes and challenges of this time, what can we learn from these two old saints about keeping our faith alive? Well, the most striking thing to me is this. They kept going. Their faith was strong enough to withstand all life throughout them. But what was it that sustained them through all those long years? Well, I think there would have been all kinds of things, like staying connected to people who could keep faith when they were weary and immersing themselves in scripture and the promises of old, trusting that God heard even when they didn't hear back. But these strategies, no matter how good and worthwhile they are, are never going to be enough. They needed something to underpin all of that. They needed to believe that the struggle was worth it, that their faith, their relationship with the living, loving God 
was worth it. They believed that their faith was worth the hard work. They knew deep within themselves that the waiting and seeking and discipline would be worth it in the end. More than that, they believed that when they found what they were looking for, it would be their heart's desire, the fulfilment of their whole lives. For us, we can do all kinds of things to strengthen our faith and they will be good and helpful. But fundamentally, we need to believe that this is worth it. That our faith, our relationship with the living, loving God is worth it. So here's the question. Do we believe our faith is worth holding on to, even when things are hard? Do we believe that this is where we find what we are looking for? That in our faith, our relationship with the living, loving God, we find our heart's desire, the fulfilment of our whole lives. Let's not kid ourselves. Despite our best efforts, there will be times of frustration and cynicism. If this time has taught us anything, it is that our journey of faith is not all plain sailing. There are times when I, and I hazard to guess you, may wonder what on earth we're doing. But my prayer is that we will have a deep belief that it is worth holding on to our faith. So as we continue to live as people of faith, as lights in the darkness, as we continue to love and to serve, I pray that this would be rooted and grounded in a faith that is worth it and the belief that our relationship with the living, loving God is our heart's desire and the fulfilment of our lives. Amen. Let us declare our faith in God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. We believe in God, the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named. We believe in God the Son, who lives in our hearts through faith and fills us with his love. We believe in God the Holy Spirit, who strengthens us with power from on high. We believe in one God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. In the dark days, under rain-heavy clouds, among broken branches on sodden earth, the snowdrops light their candles, a flame that cannot be put out by darkness or gales or doubt. Their flame is steadfast. It is full of hope and new beginnings. Darkness or gales or doubt cannot put it out. In the dark days of this dark winter, we give thanks for the snowdrops, the candlemas bells, and for all the other signs of approaching spring. Early daffodils, woodpeckers drumming, birds practising their songs, the growing of the daylight. Help us to be as cheerful and hopeful as we can, to encourage and support each other, that we may spread the light of Christ to all whom we meet. Light of Christ, scatter the darkness from your world. Lord Jesus, fill your church with that light, that it may be a light to light all nations, that we may proclaim your presence and your glory. May the light of Christ illuminate the work of our own church communities. Help us to remember that we are to be a light that shines for others. Light of Christ, scatter the darkness from your world. Thank you for the light of reason and science. We pray for those who are working to develop vaccines and drugs. 
and for all who use science for the benefit of all people. We pray for cooperation and the sharing of knowledge amongst all nations. Light of Christ, scatter the darkness from your world. Thank you for the comforting light of home. Lord, we pray for our own families, friends and neighbours, as we bring them to mind now and name them silently. And we pray for those homes where there is no kindly light or love. Kindle in our hearts a flame of love. Love to give warmth to our homes and dear ones. Love to make happy our neighbours and communities. Love to comfort our friends and forgive our foes. Love to give light to our lives and to lighten our way. May the light and peace of Christ be with us all. Light of Christ, scatter the darkness from your world. Thank you for the light of kindness, shining in so many places of darkness and despair. Lord Jesus, we pray that all who walk in darkness and in the shadow of death may see your light. Bring healing to all who are sick in body, mind or spirit. We pray for the thousands who have died in the pandemic, from the virus and from other causes, and for all who are grieving. Give courage and strength to the workers in our health service and other essential services. Lord Jesus, at every moment of our existence, you are present to us in gentle compassion. Help us to be present to one another so that our presence may be a strength that heals the wounds of time and gives hope that is for all people. Light of Christ, scatter the darkness from your world. Thank you, Lord, for this time of year when we celebrate the returning light and pray for new hope and new life. Like Simeon, may we grow old in hope and wonder. Like Anna, may we be in love with you all our days. May we be open to truth, open to surprises. May we let your spirit into our lives. May we let your justice change our behaviour. May we live in the brightness of your joy. Amen. As we rest in the light of Christ, let us join now in the prayer that Jesus taught his friends. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. God's words of peace to us. Our Saviour Christ is the Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and peace, there shall be no end. The peace of the Lord be always with you.
God's words of blessing to us. May God the Father, who led the wise men by the shining of a star to find the Christ, the light from light, lead us also in our pilgrimage to find the Lord. Amen. May God the Son, who turned water into wine at the wedding feast of Cana, transform our lives and make glad our hearts. Amen. May God the Holy Spirit, who came upon the beloved Son at his baptism in the River Jordan, pour out his gifts on us who have come to the waters of new birth. Amen. We go into the world to walk in God's light, to rejoice in God's love and to reflect God's glory. Amen. Amen.